Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am your homegirl, Miss Ella Marie. That's me, that's me. And welcome back to another video, good sis. So y'all already know, this gonna be part two of how I end up homeless at 12 years old, girl. But before we get into it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so you can catch a vibe and you can join the tribe. You feel me? And uh, we are gonna jump right into it. So y'all already know, at this point, I done got put out. I done got put out my best friend crib because her mama not going for it. And then now I'm living with my cousin them on the verge of getting put out there for deking somebody in their mouth. Now, y'all, like we discussed in the last story time, my cousin Pound Cake and Biggie, her baby daddy and they uncle and our other three cousins done ran off and left me in the middle of a fight. You know, a step two, a tussle, a grab, and bink, bink, bink. You feel me? She, they done left me outside. She's out there stranded. The girl is on the back porch looking like, how could they ever? So, girl, as I'm standing here on this back porch, and I'm just banging on this door, calling a name, talking about some let me in, nobody's coming to the door. No, nobody is peeking out the window. Nobody is saying anything, but I'm well aware that these people just ran in the house. I was just outside with y'all. So how, how, how are y'all not able to hit a door? So girl, I'm just standing on this back porch and I'm looking over here at these kids because I'm like, I hope and pray that these kids don't come over here and stop the edges out of my scalp. Because I could hear somebody saying like, come on, y'all. They scary as hell. Come to the phone. Come on. Come on. We, I, even though I didn't really pop my stuff and get in tool with them, I was just out here with everybody else. I'm an op. The girl is the op. And I'm out here by myself, lone wolf. So I'm like, oh my God. I hope these kids do not come over here and try to stomp a mud hole in my behind. Because I'm not ready. Shh. She's not ready. <laughs> the ER is not ready. Like, the girl don't even have a, a, a parent to take her to the ER right now. So, like, no, ma'am. I'm not ready. <laughs> so, girl, one man told me to, like, run around the house and see if the front door was still open. Because, you know, the little kid had just knocked on the door before we went outside. And my cousin just slammed the door back. She never locked the door, I didn't think. So, I'm like, okay, you know, let me go ahead and see if the front door is open. Girl. Thank the almighty big heavy one because the front door is open. I goes in the crib and I'm just looking at everybody like. Y'all didn't hear me knocking. What type of weird circus clowns going on here? Y'all didn't hear me knocking. So girl, at this point, everybody walking around, they paying attention to other stuff like they didn't just hear me say what I just said. So my cousin, the only one out of the group, Miss Pound Cake with the biggest mouth, she tells me, oh, girl, we thought she was already in the house. Girl, how did y'all think I was already in the house? How? When y'all took off running? Y'all, when I, when, first off, when I started walking, y'all was halfway to the house anyway. Because I was just trying to figure out what was going on. And I told y'all, we never left up out the alley. So we wasn't standing in the middle of the street like they were. So when my cousin them talked around and started walking back towards their house, aka bagging up. When they started doing all that, they had bypassed me on the little stoop anyway. Because the little stoop, the corner where that tree was cut down at, it was right there at the, the edge of the alley. Like, you seen the tree. Maybe that's why it was cut down, but you seen the tree stump and then the main street was right there. So I was sitting on the tree stump. When they turned around and ran back to the house, they were farther than me then. So of course I was going to be the last one to run. 
Y'all scary, moral of the story. Y'all scary as ever. And that's sad that you like that for real. And so I'm like, okay, girl, how how did you, how you figure that I was already in the house? Because see, now I, you know how that little moment was. You like, okay, all of this stuff done happened. All of these things is building up. And at this point, I just... I'm over it. Like, literally, that's all I could think about is, like, I'm over it. Like, I'm tired of people playing in my face. Like, I'm just stupid. Like, I don't know what's going on. Like, I can't comprehend. And I know when somebody is playing with me. I know when somebody is playing with me. You can't say, you can't convince me of nothing different. So I'm just standing there and I'm giving her the nastiest, snottiest look that could come out of one's face, okay? Like, you know how when they be like, if looks could kill? Yes, ma'am. It, it, it would have been slit throat, like, for real. I'm just looking at her like, Pookie, you know you, you, you know you about one. You about one for real. How, girl, so I'm just like, so... How? Y'all ran off and left me and locked the door. How could you think I was in the house? You didn't see me up in here, did you? Y'all heard the knocking on the door, though. So, girl, the mama like, y'all locked her out. Y'all locked her out. And I'm looking at the mama like, you a shady queen, too, because you knew out of everybody that ran up in this house. I'm pretty sure that you heard everybody's voice. You never once heard my voice up in here. Yeah, you heard me on the outside of the door saying, let me in. You heard that. I know you heard that. So I'm just like, oh, okay, Miss Girl. Now I see how you get out. And you a full-blown adult. That's sad. That That's sad to me. So I'm just like, okay, checkmate. Cool, cool, cool. Of course, at 12 years old, I don't even know how I had it. But I suck my pride up. And I just went on into the room and closed the door because I'm just like, these people petty as hell. Like, I just can't see how you could play with somebody's safety like that. Like, are you okay for real? Like, is it something that you would like to speak with somebody about? Was it something that happened to you? Because what could I have done to you for you to put me in a situation like that? Because I know y'all ain't mad over no two packs of noodles or that. Like, all right, girl, noodles two dollars. I know y'all not, like, I know you're not mad at a boy when we all kids. Yeah, granted, he was a couple years older than us. But, Pookie, that should be cross the line there. So, I know you're not mad at the boy. You're not mad at the noodles. So, what are you mad at? Like, and then for y'all to put, like, that type of situation. So, I'm like, okay, cool. So, girl, I'm just laying up in the bed. I didn't even eat dinner that night. Because they had stopped, like, giving me plates of food anyway. And I forgot to mention that in detail in my last video. That's why I put it in the caption if you read the screen. I'm like... They had stopped giving me food, like, flat out on the plate anyway. I would have to wait until all of them eat, and then I would go and get the rest of the food that's, like, left over. If there were leftovers. Because I told y'all they was as big as a boat. So, I'm just like, okay, if it's any food left over, then I got dinner for the night. But if they eat it all, I'm... I'm SOL for real. So that night, I didn't even worry about it because I had got used to going to bed hungry. Like, on some real, I had got used to going to bed hungry. And it wasn't like I was living with these people one or two days. No, this was on the course of weeks. Like, for real, for real. So when the girl came back to her family, whenever I got back, I was skinniest ever. Like, like I told y'all, it's some days that you ain't going to be able to hustle nothing. And on the days that I did hustle or I ate good at school, I was content when I got home with not having nothing, sadly. So I'm like, okay, that night, it ain't no different than any other night, and I'm already pissed off. So I just went to bed hungry. The next morning, girl, I'm the first one to get up. <laughs> I'm the first one to get up. I'm finna hurry up, and I'm finna book it on up out this door because I don't want to be here no longer than I have to. 
So, girl, the next day, I'm just sitting there at the school looking like, girl, I'm so over this junk. Like, this don't make no sense at this point. Like, now people putting me in a, you know, situation to get beat up. Like, girl, this is too much for real. So, after school, over with, girl, I'm walking home and saying, look, the little way we usually take, which is me and Biggie Pathway, which was by the park. So, I'm like, okay, you know what? I ain't in no rush to get home. I might as well sit in the park cool now of course i'm just sitting here i'm actually sitting at the picnic table doing my homework in the park so i'm like okay you know ain't nobody really around i don't see nobody up here so i'm cool 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 naive little mind so i'm cool 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 girl why the people down the street that we were gentle with why they sister them comes walking in the park so i'm like oh Oh, my goodness. Like, girl, the day just keep going. <laughs> so, girl, I'm sitting on the bench. I'm doing my homework, but I'm not going to show no, nobody that I'm sweating. That's what I'm not going to do. That point blank, period. So, girl, I'm sitting there. I'm doing my homework, but I'm watching them at the corner of my eye because you're not going to get one up on me. Pookie, calm down. So, girl, I see the girl approaching me. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm still pretending like I'm doing my homework, but I see her approaching me. Now, her friend or whomever that was then went and sat on a swing, but they looking directly towards us. I'm taking note of that. So I'm like, okay, cool, cool. As long as you stay over here, if she get booked, I'm a ding, 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 ding. And then by the time you run over here, I'll be a jump back in my stance and I'm a ding, ding, ding you up as you run up. So I'm like, okay, cool, cool, cool. Miss girl walking over there, she sits down. So I'm like, okay, okay, what's up? So I look up, hello, hello, can I help you? She like, um, so you really talking about my little brother now? So I'm like, girl, what if I... <laughs> Whoa, that wasn't what I was intending on receiving. Like, talking about who? She said, was you really talking about my little brother now? I said, baby, who is your little brother now? <laughs> who your little brother now? She was like, uh, people came up to us and told us that you was making fun of my little brother now. So I'm like, who is these people? And girl, what could I have possibly said? Because that's not that's not my style. I don't I don't worry about kids, girl, talking like I'm grown. <laughs> like I'm grown. I don't worry about kids because really I got bigger fish to fry, if you only knew. So she like, uh, we got a word that said she was talking about my little brother them, and you know it is what it is. If you want to take it that we can, it could be one. So I'm like, who could have told you that? All this other I, I, I'm not going to participate in. So, the Miss Girl standing here, she, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, for her to approach you by herself, first off, I'm, I'm watching you, little mama, because, you know, that's some issue. I'll do that, but I'm just saying. So, I'm like, okay, so, what's up? So, she like, all I know is, Monk said she was talking about my little brother, and that was some petty ass shit. You too damn big. So, I'm like, now, granted, she was older than me. So, she probably thought I was about her age. She like, you too damn big to be talking about kids. And I'm like, my point exactly. That's why I asked you, who told you and what could I have possibly said? Because I'm too damn big to be talking about a kid. So, she, I was like, uh, was this what that situation was with my cousin? And she was like, yeah, because my sister told me that it was you and your cousin. And I'm like... No, no. So we going back and forth about this situation and come to find out my cousin was talking about their little, their little brother. And when they was approached about it, my cousin them said that I said it and that wasn't the situation at all. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute. 
first off, that's how I know I'm protected because if they was really gunning for me for real, for real, they would have ran up on me when I was locked out. But it all it all made common sense because I'm like, why would y'all run in the house and lock me out? Really, to be honest, I feel like if they didn't have them teenagers outside or whomever they is, because y'all know black people could be 45 and look 12, whomever they was, if they didn't have them outside with them when they was finna run up on us in that alley, they probably would have stumped and drugged and beat my little ass. For real, for real. Because the way they was looking, it was like, yeah, yeah, count your days, count your days. So I'm like, y'all set me up to get beat up? This is weird. This is getting weird. So the man, me and the girl just sitting back here talking. We still sitting at this bench. So I'm like, oh, okay. So as we talking, I'm starting to put my shit away because now at this point, I'm heated. Uh, but I'm not going to let you sweat, but I'm heated. Like, so it is what it is. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we wrap the shit up. I end up walking off. I, I'm on my way to the crib because now I'm finna figure out what's going on because I never said nothing about this little boy and I never told nobody else nothing about this little boy. Like, he ain't never come up in my mind to talk about. Like, what, what brownie points would I have gotten? Girl, for real, that ain't even my lineup whole time. So I'm like, okay, cool. So, girl, I reached the house. My cousin them not there. Okay, they mom in the crib. So, I sit down. I talk to her. Let's just call her Big Mama. I um, I sit down. I'm talking to Big Mama. I'm like, so what's going on with Pound Cake and Biggie? So, she like, what you talking about? I said, with the kids across the alley. She was like, they was on uh, the kids across the alley was making fun of Biggie and all of this other stuff because Biggie leg was messed up. So I'm like, no, that's not what happened. So she was like, yes, it is. That's what my daughter's them told me. So I'm like, okay, well, that's what you believe. That's not what happened. And so she like, um, so what happened? I get her to run down. She like. Girl, you let them people get up in your head. Ain't nobody trying to uh set you up. Like, they gonna set you up to do what? So they could go outside and fight too? I said, first off, they, they weren't trying to fight. They start bagging up when the kids start approaching. They was never trying to fight. They left me outside. So she was like, girl, see, look, I that's why I don't get up into y'all kid drama because y'all always got something going on. So she pretty much brushed me off. And I'm just like, you weird as hell. <laughs> like, you weird, weird. And I don't like that for either one of us. So I'm like, okay, you know, people, you just old or young. Some shit you just, people just won't get, like. For real, for real. So, I'm like, okay, cool. Now, this incident passed by. I'm just walking around with all this attention on my chest because I can't wait to get the fuck up out of here. Truthfully, I didn't know where I was going to go, but I just felt like it was some type of intervention that was going to happen for me. For real, for real. Because I'm like, ain't no way I done came this far in life to be dealing with this shit long term. So, I'm like, okay, cool. Now... My mind had suppressed it down to like being shorter than what it was because some of the days I just don't even remember y'all. Like no cap, I don't even remember. And if it wasn't for for me and my children's father talking about it, I wouldn't have, like I wouldn't have came to the realization that it was so long. And I'm like, I asked him a question after I dropped the first story time. I'm like, when I tell part two, I'm trying to figure out why did it seem so long? Like it seemed short, but the seasons changed. And that caught me off guard because I'm like, when I first moved into their house, I was walking up and down the street, like, and it was summertime. And he was like, yeah, and you stay through the holidays. And I'm like, and sure enough, if shit don't stink, when I left their house, it had ice on the ground. Like, for real, for real. But let's get into that.
Now, the day is approaching on past, and I do remember Thanksgiving, they didn't want to give me nothing really to eat for Thanksgiving. Now, everybody was over there, and they had different cousins coming over and all this stuff, but at this point, I wasn't real acquainted with my mother's side of the family um that side of the family so i knew these people was my cousins and stuff but it was like i don't know you <laughs> like i don't know you i know you're some kin to me but i don't know who you are so i'm like okay well you know i'm not gonna go and interact with them because i don't really know them so i'm just sitting back i'm like okay well you know once everybody else eat i'm gonna go and get me some food and i'ma just chill out so girl when well, my cousin them came over there one of the sets of cousins you know they had they life together their mama was doing her shit so i'm like okay cool that cousin i knew who she was but i wasn't acquainted with her for real because when we used to stay in the projects now the cousins that i'm staying with now at this point with in the story the cousins that I'm staying with now, Biggie and Pound Cake, when I first met them, we were all living in the projects together. Like, they had an apartment, we had an apartment, but we all was in the projects together. So, that was the first time that I had met Biggie and Pound Cake. And when I met them, I was introduced to another cousin. And we gonna call her Baby Bougie. So, when I was introduced to Baby Bougie, it was always like she had a problem with me. Like, I don't know if I was looked at as the poor cousin, you know, the the broken, dirty cousin, which was never the case at all. Like, the girl may have been broke a couple days. And look, we talking about it like I'm 15, 16 years old, baby. I'm a shorty. Y'all don't got money, but y'all mama and them got a little money. You feel what I'm saying? We all broke, truly, but kids don't look at it like that. So, I don't know what the case was. But, girl, they used to get with each other and kick heat about me. Like, I could be right there. Right there. And they would kick key about me on the low. Like, I was stupid and didn't know they were talking about me. And the crazy part was, it was so fucked up. Because even the fucking adults who were my cousins and my mother's cousins would like sit up in the kitchen. And I remember them sitting in the kitchen in the dining room, snickering and kikiing. And you know how when adults talking about people, they don't really give a f what they say. Like if you pick up, if you smart enough to pick up on it, then whoop the do for you. But 9 out of 10, what you pick up on is going to hurt your feelings when you hear it. So I'm just like, damn, I'm the topic of everybody's conversation in here. Like, this is dinner party tea. Like, I'm just homeless and have nowhere to go, barely can feed myself. And girl, I'm just the topic of conversation. And I'm just like, this shit is crazy. As ever. Like, this is something that you would see in a movie. So, I'm just feeling so defeated and low and just embarrassed by my situation. And I'm like, I wish that I was at home with my own fucked up family. Because, like, you know, sometimes that devil that you know is better than the one that you don't know. And that's how I was feeling at that moment. And I really feel like that developed... It developed false loyalty in me, like having trust issues for one, because you can't trust the people that you're closest to. And then you can't trust people that pretend they're giving you a helping hand either. That's crazy to me. So I definitely feel like this experience really brought up insecurities within me that I don't want to have, like. I don't have trust issues. I don't want to feel like I have abandonment issues. I don't want to uh, feel like if I don't have it all together, I'm going to be somebody's topic of conversation. I don't want to have that paranoia laying, you know, underneath the surface. And that's really, that's what it did. Because I'm just like, dang, these people really talking about me like this. Like, 
it's crazy as ever. I didn't ask to be in this situation, and none of y'all that's talking offered to help me get out the situation. So it was just like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a, a, so, so gracious, gracious and I'm, and so, I'm amazing so amazing because I'm taking in this stray cat, cat off, the off the streets, streets and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, get so, so much, much, so, much so much glory and glorification, and, glorification and, and, oh and oh my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my mother had to take in this poor young orphan child, and she can't even feed herself. She wants two packs of noodles a day. <laughs> like That's really what the f it was given, and I'm just like, fuck all y'all. And the crazy part is, I remember, like, not even hovering ill will toward it. Like, ill intentions for them. I didn't have animosity towards them. I didn't feel no type of regret towards, towards them. I just, I was numb. I was numb. Like, I've been numb to emotions for a long time now that I'm realizing what was going on in this, this portion of my life. Because every story time that I do, I sit down and I analyze what was I thinking in that moment? What could have uh provoked this type of reaction from me? Like, what did this really build up in me? Because everything that we go through... It's like a brick. That brick is it creates and molds and shapes the person that you become after that experience is over. It's going to alter something in you. It's going to shape something in you. It's going to develop or take away something in you. Each experience. And when I remember like being in that house and all of them people in there talking about me, like you got certain little conversations on the slick side being had, um, and people making general conversation, but you know, the intention of the conversation is ill willed towards you because you're not illiterate you don't have a deficiency that does not allow you not to comprehend you know how to read the room your energy is telling you what this room is saying before any words is being exchanged out of anybody's mouth you done been here you in the situation may be different but you done been in this situation where you have to read this atmosphere and everything up in this energy realm is going to tell you the intentions from every being in this room so I'm I'm just up in here and I'm reading this room and I'm feeling this energy and I can feel my energy as a little girl depleting. Like it's waking up some type of hunger in me. That's just like one thing I know is when I'm of age, I will never find myself in this situation again. And that's all I remember telling myself, like, I would never be in this situation again if it's up to me, period. And I won't allow anybody to come into my life and make these type of decisions for me. And I can literally, like, feel the energy in this environment just not being the healthiest. And that shit was a hard pill to swallow. So I'm just like, okay, well, I know for a fact I'm not going to be here for Christmas. <laughs> so so I'm just telling myself, like, I'm not going to be here for Christmas. Like, uh-uh, y'all not, no, 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 no. So as the Thanksgiving little day going on and on, girl, they started to, like, come up with games and stuff like that. And I'm just sitting on the side of the wall in the chair, like watching them play the games because I was never offered to get into the games. I was, uh, certain games like the one that they had where everybody wrote down their name, they put their name in a hat and it was pretty much like an advancement on Christmas. So whoever you pulled out the hat, you had to be their secret Santa. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Now the task was to spend $25 on that person a gift and i'm like okay you know that's cool that's cool that's cool oh i don't care i could get that you know 
I'm getting excited. Like, okay, I want to be included in that. You know, like as a kid, you want to be included in shit that sounds fun. When I wasn't invited to put my name in that hat, I'm like, damn. I can't put my name in the hat? I was like, oh, okay. Cool. Girl, I remember that moment so vividly. I was like, that is fucked up. And it did something in me because later on throughout that month of November, I literally was hustling to buy my own self Christmas presents. Like I was going to Dollar Tree, picking up little mirrors and everything. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be my Christmas gift to myself. So when all of them open and they shit, I can have something to open to, even if they don't get me nothing. And I'm like, because at that thought was like, yeah, I'm not going to be here for Christmas. But then I had been there months and months. So I'm like, it could be a possibility that I will be here for Christmas. I don't know at this point. So I'm hustling to get my little self Christmas gifts and everything, girl. I'm at the Dollar Tree buying lip gloss and all type of shit. So it comes, I want to say, the first week of December. If I'm not mistaken, it has to be like December 3rd or 4th. When I decided to go back home and my mother called for me to come back home, they were already moving. So I had to come back home and get my stuff. That's what she called me for, to come back home to pack up my things. So as I go back home and I'm packing up my stuff and we putting it on the, the U-Haul thingy, well, I'm like, okay, well, you know, let me try to squeeze up in here because I'm not going back there. That's pretty much what my mindset was. Wherever y'all going, I'm going to. Point blank period. I'm going to force my way up in here because once my mama told me that she was moving back to the city city, I'm like, oh, girl, no, you're not going to leave me out here in the burbs by myself. So, yeah, I'm going to the city with you. And I know how to move around the city. So, yeah, we're going together. Oh, fuck you so now. So, I hop up in there. Now, when she moves back to the city, she moves and my siblings stay in the burbs. They part ways and go live on their own finally so i'm like okay cool so now it's just me my mama and her boyfriend and her boyfriend rinky dink raggedy ass girl i'm just looking like in my head when i first got to the apartment i didn't think that my siblings was moving back to the suburbs they was not going to the city with us i didn't think that so i'm like okay cool 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 you know it is what it is now the only reason that I felt like I was cool with that and I was looking forward to my siblings living there was because I did not want to live by myself with my mama's boyfriend. Like, and of course, I always have lived in the house with my mother and my siblings. I never, you know, been separated from them, even though they were a pain in my ass. I'm like, I ain't never been separated from y'all except for this little period of time but i don't know him so that was a problem for me and my mom and my and her boyfriend used to always argue at the house that we were moving from so of course i didn't want to be there by myself with them <laughs> in a whole new area like we on the south side of chicago i don't know too many people over here. I know some people because I had cousins a couple blocks away. I knew some people, but I don't really know a lot of people over here. So this is all unfamiliar territory. And I just came out of survival mode. So now I want to be comfortable because I'm back in the house with my parent. I want to be comfortable, but girl, please, the story keeps getting a little ghetto. Because now at this point, the demon that's in the house is her boyfriend. So if I'm just coming from survival mode with my own family members, my cousins, because I was homeless. Now that I have a home, my home is still dysfunctional. 
Now I have to be in same survival mode. Now there, when I was with my cousin, my survival mode was flight. It was to take flight. Like, leave as soon as you can. Leave as soon as you can. Don't fight them because you're going to get put out. Just leave as soon as you can. Leave, 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 leave. That's all I kept thinking, dreaming, manifesting, praying, everything about was to leave there. Now, when I get back in my mother's care and I'm back at home with my parent, her boyfriend is here. So, I don't, it was like the flight portion of my instincts were already depleted. They were already depleted. It was no more flight in me. So, the only thing left for me to do was to fight. So my brother, my mama's boyfriend was the most countryest, abusive clown that I know, for real. Like, he barely could read or write, but he wanted to fight every day. And I'm not about to fight no fully grown man every single day. Like, what the fuck is your problem? You come in the house from work, you have an issue. The dog, which is about 25 pounds, needs to go outside. There's an issue. Uh, if there's a shoe on the floor, there's an issue. If my mama ain't cooking dinner fast enough, there's an issue. It was always a fucking issue. And I just could not deal with that shit no longer. Like, it was just bothering the fuck out of me. So, at a young age, I'm literally running up on this man. Like, we finna fight it out. Like, bro, I'm sick of you. Shut up. Like, for real, for real, shut up. And see, my mama is more of a submissive woman than I am. And that's no shade, no tea. Like, no shade, no tea. Being submissive as a woman. However, there's a clear, healthy balance that needs to be had. And so, at that point, my sibling already done instilled this urge to defend myself against men within me. And then now I'm in a household with a real abuser and I have to defend myself. So here we go. This is the cycle. of Now, when we get in the house with him, I'm like, hey, bro, you, you can chill the fuck out for real. Like, uh, she ain't got to do shit type shit. Like, this is literally what I'm on at 12 years old. Now, you can chill out. Your food ain't done. Heat something up in the microwave type shit. And now I'm in protective mode of my own mother who just wasn't protecting me. <laughs> it, it's crazy how shit happens. And so I'm like, you know, we going back and forth and they having little small bickerings. And when, you know, the situation get too loud or too chaotic or too aggressive, here I am being the peacemaker. And I always have tried to be the peacemaker or I always felt like I was forced into the being the peacemaker or the sounding voice and a lot of shit. But it was just like different stages of my life showed me how to do that. And in this moment, I felt like the aggressive tendency in me came from this, it came from this experience right here because I started to literally see a different side of myself that was just unhealthy and unhinged and girl, just, oh my God. Like, but it was some good shame up out of that later on. As we going through this sense of living with him and girl, he just feel like he the king dingling of the universe. You will see you're nothing as a man for real. You're nothing as a man for real. Like, any person who acts like this, get treated like this, do and say the things that you say, you are nothing. For real, for real. So, I'm in the house, finally, with my own parent. And we literally, at this point in time, I think we were probably in the house, you know, about two weeks. Shit good, shit like straight, sweet. It's cool. After that two weeks half span happened... You know, December started to pass. January stepping up in the door, full throttle, foot working. The bullshit starts. He like, oh yeah, that first month 
when the bills is due. Oh, baby, it's a whole commotion. It's a whole commotion. Now, at this point, I'm like, okay, yeah, I can't, I can't be a part of that. My instinct was to shut down around this time because I'm just like, if I say something, I might get put out. But after so long of having these incidents going on back and forth, it was just like I, I couldn't hold my tongue no more. So me and him started to get into verbal altercations often, like to the point where I'm letting him know, like, Sleep with one eye open because I'm getting to that point. And I seen a side of myself that I ain't like. I didn't know who she was. I didn't want to. I knew I wanted to be in association with her because she was protecting me. But I didn't know that girl. And I didn't want to conform into her. I didn't want to be that angry all the time. And like, girl, I remember having journals and journals and journals of letters to myself. Like, I'm pissed the fuck off. I'm tired. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm upset. I'm resentful. I got anger. I'm just frustrated. Girl, I just journals and journals. And all through this time, now big homie that actually became my boyfriend. So he went from walking down the street with me, taking me different places because I'm homeless, protecting me coming home to he's now my boyfriend for real, for real. So I'm transitioning from 12 to like 13 at this point. And I remember going into my eighth grade year at the new house and the new house in the city. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I don't know what this school year going to be like because I would have left all my friends behind. Um, uh, I got to start all over in a whole new neighborhood. And y'all know Chicago neighborhoods, baby. Uh, it don't always be the easiest to go and make friends. You might mess around and get jumped on your first day of school. Like, so I'm like, girl, this is so ghetto. But school was like that place where I just went to, girl, escape. Like, from the moment that I walked up in there, I was like, for one, this school is so old. <laughs> Jesus, this school is old. But I'ma do whatever I can do to get up out this house with this man because I don't want to be here no more. And of course, my mama was getting her little break because he used to work throughout the day. And see, that's the problem. That was that was a problem for me because he used to work throughout the day. So she would get a break at home, which sort of eased my mind while I'm at school on what's going on with her. But then when I get out of school, he'll be on his way home. So I met with the animosity once I got home. And so I started to mask that in multiple ways because I would go and do after school things. Like I wanted to be an everyday girl everything i started taking advanced literature classes so that kept me out the school girl then i'm with the theater club that's keeping me out of school then i'm over here trying to do a spelling bee child that's keeping me out of school so i'm like okay when i get home like 6 30 hopefully he tipped out and he gone to sleep girl baby this man God rest his soul. Ella, be respectful. This man made my life a living hell. Okay? <laughs> that whole relationship made my life a living hell. Uh, girl, just living in that house after coming from being homeless just made my life a living hell. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, it was just too, too much. But then... 12, well, really 10 to 14. And then 14 just took me on a whole nother avenue of life. And I just knew that I wasn't going to make them same mistakes. Like, I knew for a fact. I just, I'm like, whatever I have to do is going to be the complete opposite of what I say be done. I can take some of the good stuff and use it and apply it, but some of the bad shit that altered and changed and shaped me, I'm not doing. No. I, I don't even want to come close to it. But at this point, Big Buddy 
he done became my boyfriend. So when he used to come over on the weekends and stuff and like kick it and see me and stuff, her boyfriend, them, them was the only times that the house was cool. Like the whole time we in the living room talking, kicking it, you know, outside, running up and down the street, whatever. That was the only time that my home life was peaceful was when he walked through the door because it was like, OK, 